Swedish marine biologists Thomas Lundalf and Lisbeth Jonsson arrive early at their research boat. They're taking advantage of the longer, warmer Scandinavian summer days to sail off the Tisla Reef, an area just one hour from the coast near the maritime border between Sweden and Norway. They are looking for Europe's secret underwater gardens, deep water coral reefs. They use this remote operated vehicle to take pictures of the reefs. And this is what they find, the largest onshore deepwater coral reefs discovered in Europe to date. The reef is around 1,200 meters long and some 200 meters wide. Unlike tropical corals, these deepwater corals grow below the reach of sunlight, where temperatures never go above 13 degrees Celsius. Much of its basic biology is still a mystery to scientists, whose priority is to chart the location, shape and dimensions of these reefs. This, Thomas Lundbav says, is the first step to understanding them better. It's uh, very important to have precise maps of where they occur. If, if you should have any chance of protecting them, then you can tell fishermen where not to use gear that drags along the bottom. In Norway, for example, there is a general law uh, forbidding trawling in all known coral areas. That, of course, is only effective if you have very precise maps where the corals occur. It's only over the last few years that we started to get these maps. So far, deepwater corals have been identified throughout European waters, but their exact location, morphology and basic biology are still largely unknown. What scientists have identified is the coral's worst enemy, trawling. This is a trawled coral reef at around 120 meters depth. In just seconds, trawling nets can destroy enormous compounds of corals that need thousands of years to grow. Other threats include sedimentation, water pollution and global warming. European scientists are studying these creatures' biological makeup through the Hermes project. This will advise authorities on how to protect reefs that are vital to entire marine ecosystems. We found more than 1,300 species associating with uh, Lophelia petusa. And uh, so far we haven't had the possibility to investigate properly all the different groups of animals still. So uh, we will find a lot more species, we think. Video footage, pictures and living examples are then analysed in this red building, the Giano Marine Biological Laboratory. Three years ago, scientists here began to use complex genetic techniques to understand more about how deepwater corals reproduce. Initial conclusions are just beginning to emerge, says molecular biologist Carl Andre, research coordinator. Genetic uh, analysis of Ophelia has, has shown us that uh, uh, they reproduce both sexually and clonally and, and the degree of clonality varies between different reefs. Um, we have also seen that uh, individuals on nearby reefs are more related to each other. So that implies that uh, dispersal between reefs are more likely if the reefs are close to each other. Deepwater coral research is so specialised and expensive that pan-European cooperation is vital. Here in Oban, West Scotland, a research boat from a Dutch marine institute arrives after 15 days studying coral reefs off the British coast. On board are 15 biologists from six different European countries and an American researcher. They've studied the Rockall Bank, a coral-rich subaquatic mountain chain. Scientists mapped and analysed the area to understand how different they are from their better-known cousins, tropical corals. Dutch researcher Gerard Duinevelt is leader of the expedition. He uses sophisticated onboard equipment to study corals. This analyses biological patterns in deep water. Robots equipped with lasers and video cameras record and measure seabed plants and animals. The equipment has proven useful. It comes up with these interactive maps of underwater currents in the area. They help scientists understand how corals feed, grow and colonise. 
Deepwater corals only grow between 4 and 25 millimetres per year. Given the many threats surrounding them, European scientists think more research is essential if future generations are to admire the beauty of these hidden worlds.